Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and I'm back from Warhammer Fest and I want to talk about a few things regarding Warhammer the Old World. Now I do sound a bit odd and that's because, yeah, I managed to catch the flu there. Um, not fun, but hey. But if you follow this channel, you'll know that most of my predictions actually came true for Warhammer the Old World. And I want to discuss a few of them which have come true and then talk about some new ones because, well, that's always fun, right? So without further ado, let's begin. So to be clear, this is the predictions that I said I feel very strongly about and not just the general rumor stuff. So the base sizes increasing. We know that the base sizes have increased for 20s to 25s and a bunch of other bases will also keep increasing. The cavalry is very likely on a 30-60. Stuff like Chaos Warriors will likely go from 25 to 30s, which by the way I tested out on some cardboard cutouts and it is amazing for blood letters. Kislev and Cafe are not going to be there at launch. This was confirmed in the Q&A session that was out of camera and it's something that I've been saying for months now because it just makes sense. They want to get the old stuff out of the way first, get people to buy that, and then move on to the newer stuff. I imagine that Kislev is about maybe a year or two away, and then, you know, we'll go from there. The launch box, uh, yes, because it's not called a starter, it's called a launch box, being Tomb Kings versus Bretonia, I called it, and yeah, we pretty much got that confirmed with that trailer. The theme at the beginning is going to be Bretonians versus Tomb Kings, which makes a lot of sense considering that... Well, the Bretonians had some of the worst rules, so they're going to just kind of show them off, and the Tomb Kings kind of got shafted in terms of rules too. So, yeah, this is pretty good. And finally, every single army was going to get rules. A lot of people got worried because the main focus is becoming, you know, the old world itself, and eventually they will spread out, they will go to other locations, but a lot of people were worried that the Lizardmen, for example, or the Dark Elves weren't going to get rule updates. Uh, yeah, they're all getting rules, which is great, because at the end of the day, this means that you can play with your favorite army. Hell, even the Chaos Dwarves from Forge World, the Legion of Asgore, are going to get rule updates. Now, there's a few more that came true, but we're not here for that, right? We're here for some new ones, so let's get started. One thing that was confirmed is that the Dogs of War are not getting any rule updates, and I know that kind of made a lot of people disappointed. However, I have reason to believe that Games Workshop are at least considering splitting up all three main factions of the Dogs of War, Astalia, Talia, and Araby. Now, they kind of hinted at that in a Border Prince post that they did for Warhammer the Old World, where we saw some very interesting new iconography. Now, there's also the case of Talia, Stalia, and Araby is getting a lot of new lore through Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, which, by the way, we know is canon. So anything that we hear from there could be the possible future in the tabletop. And that's absolutely fantastic, as that could also help out with Total War Warhammer 3. So I have reason to believe, again, that they are at least dabbling with the idea, maybe doing some basic concepts, and seeing how could this work and how could this differentiate from other races to have something quite fun, new, and exciting. And obviously this is races that people were asking for. Hell, Someone made a, uh, I believe it was a Talia comment in the Q&A session and everyone started cheering. There's around 800 people in that auditorium and obviously Games Workshop are taking into account what they're hearing, what they're getting asked for, and they're likely going to be thinking about the future. I wouldn't expect them anytime soon, but maybe a few years down the line. Right now, I feel like the main focus on new races and factions would obviously be Kislev and Cafe. Though further to this, I believe that Games Workshop are also looking at the future for other main races and factions. I'm talking Ind, Koresh, and so on. They did mention that the Warhammer Fantasy world was massive, and they wouldn't be able to do just about everything. You never know for the future, though. If it does generate a lot of sales, they will push a lot of attention towards it. But we also know through developer interviews of staff who have left GW, or have been able to talk about Warhammer Fantasy uh, in the past and so on, that they had so many different plans. They had plans to introduce loads of different factions. Like, for example, we did know that there was plans way back in the day for a Nippon vs. Hobgoblin Carnet box. That was way back in the day. You never know if those ideas might make it into the future, because Games Workshop do actually hold a lot of stuff and keep it in their vault, for example, even if it's just basic ideas. Hell, we've already started seeing hints about Epic returning, you know? Again, all this would depend on sales, and we shouldn't really expect any of this anytime soon. It would have to be way down the line, maybe two, three years, something like that, 
if we get, like, say, for example, a Old World 2nd Edition, because I, I believe they will likely go with a D edition format. It does make sense to do so, as that would allow for new units to be implemented and so on, not just the ones that will get new from the release of each and every army book. And even further to this, yes, there's a lot of things that are kind of linked up. I believe that Games Workshop will go back to supplements, like, for example, the Vampire Coast, and see about potentially making them a fully-fledged army. We've seen how popular they have been for Total War, and it's very likely that Games Workshop have noticed that too. And, well, it's easy to make some cash. I, for one, would easily buy a full Vampire Coast army, because it would be very different to all the different undead factions that we have already, very different to the Vampire Counts and the Tomb Kings too. There are a few different types of armies that we did see in White Dwarf, like, for example, again, the Vampire Coast, and obviously rules for established factions to have your own separate armies. This was more or less seen, actually, in the Storm of Chaos. You know, the Cult of Excess, and pretty much the Slayer cult and so on but we know for a fact right now that the bretonians have three separate uh, rules uh, well not three separate rules we don't know exactly how it's going to work but we know that they've got rules for being a crusading army a normal dukedom and even exiled knights so it's very likely that we're going to see it with pretty much every faction this will provide a lot of interesting stuff if we do get for example you know a slayer army for the dwarves because that's something that was quite popular in the storm of chaos a marienburg list because marienburg even though it is still part of the Empire, they're about to go independent and so on in this part of the story, so they should have something quite interesting and different. Alright, so this is the big one. Release date. Yes, I still believe that Warhammer the Old World is going to be released this year, likely between October, November and December, as that makes a lot of sense. Right now, you know, we know, for example, 10th edition is coming out for Warhammer 40k in June. The specific date, I don't believe, has been revealed by Games Workshop, but has actually been revealed by retailers who... My guess just were a bit quick to tell people. So with 10th in June, that leaves a lot of time for them open, and it kind of makes sense. Once 10th edition releases, then they can start ramping up the information and building up to the eventual release. We've already starting to see some models, painted models too, which means that they're getting closer and closer. I'm telling you, it's likely going to be around November. I have nothing but like real big hope here and I've never felt so sure in my life it's going to be this year which means that if you guys have been waiting to start painting you might want to start painting now don't worry there'll be a video on how to get into it and prepare soon enough but yeah it's likely going to be this year and last thing is compatibility. So this is a bit of a weird thing because Games Workshop said that there was not going to be any compatibility going backwards or forwards, but I imagine that some models, which do make sense, will. So for example, the new Saurus, the new Chaos Warriors, all the stuff which actually existed in Warhammer Fantasy. This means that anything that makes sense in the setting will go back, but nothing like, say, for example, you know, the Bone Reapers, the Deepkin, all that type of stuff. As long as it existed in Warhammer Fantasy and had a model update, then yes, that would actually work out quite well. This also helps Games Workshop out tremendously as that means that they won't have to actually, well you know, uh, spend time developing a model which already exists at one point or another. Same thing for the Greater Demons. Most of the Greater Demons didn't get updated for Warhammer Fantasy. Some did during the end times but they've got a new look and how we even use them in Total War Warhammer like the Keeper of Secrets so it makes sense to be able to use them too. They'll also very likely rank up quite nicely with all the new bases that we'll get, especially for, you know, all the troops and so on, as those demons will have to be on 30s, so I imagine that the new big boys will have to be on uh, 120s. There's a few other things that I'd like to talk about, but we're going to leave that until a little bit later as more releases start coming out for info dumps and so on. Um, it just makes sense to talk about this stuff first and then go on to the other stuff and to be honest it's an eight minute video and it's already taken me about six hours to record as i do feel freaking awful so i feel like a little break is needed but yeah let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below let's start a bit of a discussion i hope you guys are excited as old world as i am um but yeah i'll see you all again very very soon have a good day